Michael Penix Jr. is smooth. He's poised in and around the pocket. He plays really smart. He's well coached. He throws a great ball, and he's got his shit together off the field. This is the scoop on the left-handed gunslinger from the University of Washington Huskies, Michael Penix Jr., on my take. The 2024 NFL Draft is loaded with potential franchise quarterbacks. Word is there could be up to five QBs selected in the first round alone. This is my second breakdown of the QBs in this year's draft, the first being LSU's Jaden Daniels. And today I'm going to take a look at University of Washington left-handed QB Michael Penix Jr. Although Penix Jr. doesn't have the total, total skill set of a Caleb Williams or a Jaden Daniels, in terms of being a quote-unquote dual-threat quarterback, the upside that Penix Jr. has is really good, and he's going to make somebody really, really happy on draft day. This is what I like about Penix Jr. We'll start with pocket poise. This dude doesn't get rattled. There's two things that jump out to me about his pocket poise, and that is... He slides around really well, side to side. I call it scoot and pedal. And uh, he also does that controlled shuffle. We talked about with Jaden Daniels. Uh, has the same type of uh, movement in the pocket where he just very casually shuffles back away from the line of scrimmage, keeping his eyes downfield. And the other thing that I really like about his pocket poise is he goes through his progression reads one to two to three to check down or one to two to check down. And he uses his feet to buy him time so he can go through his progressions and then deal the ball to the right receiver. Why is this important? Because when he starts to sense that the pocket may be breaking down or he goes to his number three read, a lot of QBs just put the ball under their arm and they're out. He doesn't do that. He continues to hang in the pocket, stay in there, move to avoid getting hit or knocked off his platform, and then goes through his progressions and deals the rock. That's a great skill to have. Penix backpedals, goes right downfield into traffic. It's Punk with the leaping. He's now working with comedy shots. Very nice. Oh, the Sarge has all kinds of tricks up his sleeve. Going deep and wide open, Jalen Polk. Flags are down. Polk will take it the distance. Inverted, Bill said, down there in the end. Yeah. Penix from the pocket, spins free. Trying to mirror Kate Williams' creativity. Launches the end zone. Caught! No signal that he holds. This is the ninth straight pass play for Washington. Penix going far side. End zone, Odunze, revenge! After that, took a shot to the midsection. Here comes late pressure right at the middle. Penix backpedals and checks it for McMillan, who gathers it in and is knocked out. He throws a great ball. Tight, spiral, it's pretty. I mean, he's pretty anyway because he's left-handed. And lefties just look cool throwing the ball. And Penix Jr. is no different. But he throws a tight spiral, and that makes it an easy ball for receivers to catch. And with his arsenal of throws, he is absolutely nails on back shoulder throws. Time and time again throughout the season, he put the, that ball exactly where it needed to go against tight coverage. Launching for the end zone. Forget being patient. Penix looks to the other side and goes to his reliable weapon. When in doubt, dial up Odu. He really does all the little things right. And I'm going to talk about the coaching that he has obviously received in his college career. But when you watch him play throughout the season, he does the little subtle things really, really well. I've talked about the progressions and how he'll look 
look, look, and then know exactly where his running back is and get it out there right now so that his back can extend the play. I've always told my quarterbacks, always know where your running back is. Defenses cannot account for the running back in the passing game. But a lot of QBs ignore those guys when they're standing all by themselves, either right over the ball on a check down or out in the flat on a swing route. And instead of putting the ball under your arm and getting a yard or two or maybe even losing yardage on a sack, Penix does a great job of just spitting the ball out there and letting his back do the work for him. And whether your running back catches that ball and gets one or two yards and gets tackled, or runs for 5, 8, 12 yards and gets tackled. That's moving the sticks, and it's positive yardage. He's really fundamentally sound on ball fakes on play passes. Uh, You watch film of him, and it would be really, really hard if you're a safety or somebody in the secondary that's trying to make a determination of whether he's handed the ball off or not. He looks like he does every time on play passes. He does a great job with ball fakes. And then one play in particular, I think, really sums up his skill set in regards to doing the little things right. And that was the regular season win against the Oregon Ducks. The game-winning touchdown pass that he threw from about the, I think it was maybe from the 20-yard line. It may have been even inside the 20, where he threw a... Uh, back shoulder fade uh, for a touchdown. And when he threw it, his receiver caught the ball and the cornerback was there, but there was no safety there. And with the uh, camera shot that the TV, uh, the TV crew is using shooting it from the side, it was hard to tell what coverage they were playing and what that safety was doing, but he wasn't in the picture. So the replay of that, they shot they shot it from behind the offense, the end zone. So you could see all 11 offensive guys, but you could also see all 11 defensive guys, including the safeties. Oregon was in cover two, meaning they had a safety to the hash or on the hash to the side he threw that back shoulder route. And um, I'm watching Penix and I'm watching kind of trying to watch all 22 guys as they let the play run. And on the snap of the ball, that safety started to move inside towards the middle of the field, which right away told me that Penix Jr. was looking him off with his eyes to hold him or move him. So they show it on a third replay. And this time they've got the camera right in Penix's face as he takes the snap. And sure enough, on the snap of the ball, his eyes scan to the right, which makes that safety sink down inside. And that's all you need is for that guy to either freeze on the hash or to take a step towards the middle of the field and he's toast. And what Penix Jr. did when he when he did that look off was he assured his receiver that he was going to get one-on-one coverage with no safety help. Now, of course, Kirk Herbstreet, who's doing color commentary for that for the game on national TV, missed the entire thing. You know, they had three replays on it, and he never said anything about Penix Jr. looking off the safety and what kind of a awesome skill that is for any quarterback at any level. But again, that goes back to doing the little things right. Okay. Uh, This young man is very, very confident. He plays with a swagger, but he's also really humble. Now, there was uh, the same game, the same Oregon game, after the game on the field, really telling about this young man. He's standing there waiting for them to give him the green light for the interview, the on-field interview. And you've got fans all over the place patting him on the back, slapping his shoulder, whatever and the camera's on him it's on the uh the young lady that's getting ready to interview him and Penix Jr's got tears in his eyes and he's just standing there soaking in the atmosphere and the environment and the reporter asks him questions and he is saying all the right things 
all the right things. He's thanking his teammates. Um, he's thanking the Oregon Ducks for, for you know, competitive game. He's thanking the fans. He's basically handling himself the way that a starting quarterback should. And this year there were some really questionable uh, antics by some other Pac-12 quarterbacks. And so to see him act this way after the game and after a, just a huge win was really, really refreshing. And that is something that he's going to take with him to the NFL, which is really going to pay dividends for the team that drafts him. Okay, he, he throws a great deep ball. Whether he's throwing a two, which is a uh, corner of the end zone vertical throw when you're down in the red zone, where you don't put a lot of air underneath it and you don't throw it flat, but you kind of put a little loft on it. That's called a two. That's what I call it, a two. He really nails that. Puts it right to that back pylon and lets his receiver go make a play. And then outside verticals and posts out in the open field, he throws a three, which is putting a, a lot of air underneath it. Nice, soft, tight spiral and lets his receiver go get the rock. He throws a great deep ball. Penix gonna take a shot down the field, looking for Odunze, and he hold it in. They just blocked their tails off for the running back. Nixon in the backfield, Penix throws toward the corner of the end zone. That one is caught. So his wide receiver can make a play down the field. No Jalen McMillan, but Bernard is talented, so he's stepping in now toward the end zone. Caught! What a throw! Polk! Touchdown! Great at forcing third down and longs. Penix with a shot down the sideline. And what hand now of the first half as Penix heaves it down into the end zone. Caught, touchdown, Odunze for the second time tonight. Playing to get to a bowl game. They want another game in their career here. Penix play action. Looking to go over the top. He catapults it down the field. Odunze is alive. Penix Jr. is physically tough. I mean... You want to see a game that proves that the national championship game against the Michigan Wolverines, they beat the shit out of him for four quarters. He was banged up after the game. He's walking off the field, holding his ribs. Uh, they hammered him the, the entire game and he never tapped out, never came out. He played every snap and uh, he's tough, physically tough. He's also tough in the fact that he has overcome a couple of serious knee injuries in his college career. And uh, that really tells you what a guy's all about when he goes through that twice. And the rehab on those knee surgeries is really intense and very difficult. And uh, he did it a couple times and uh, showed up this year you know, as a senior for the Huskies. And, um, you know, that's a testament to his, to his toughness and his grit as a player. Okay, one category that I think is overlooked by a lot of people, and that is he played in a QB-friendly offense for the Washington Huskies. And that does two things for him. Number one, it gives him a leg up on a lot of guys that are going into the NFL out of college this year, there are a whole bunch of QBs across the country that didn't play in an offense that teaches quarterbacks the passing game. And when we say QB friendly offense, that's exactly what we're talking about. You know, getting coached up and playing in a system where you have to uh, go through pre and post snap reads and progression reads after the snap and um, throw the ball accurately and have timing and anticipation on your throws, be able to match your drops with the routes you're throwing 
so that you're able to throw it in rhythm. Uh, there were a number of times this year with starting NFL quarterbacks where I watched in games where they look like deer in headlights on certain routes, which were easy reads. You know, there's, I still think that there's a few QBs in the NFL that don't understand the stick concept. And that's a pretty popular route. Now it's an air raid route. And it's like, these guys are holding the ball going, should I, should I, should I, should I, Oh shoot. I better throw it to the running back. And the back should have caught the ball immediately based on what the defender did sinking down and covering the stick route. Those are things that Penix jr played in and what's taught at the university of Washington. That's going to help him tremendously in the NFL. The second reason why playing in that type of offense in college is so important for him, it's going to allow him to play sooner and be an effective quarterback sooner. And as I said earlier with the check down stuff, Penix Jr. has this clock in his head, which um, that can be coached. And uh, he definitely has it coming into the NFL. And that clock is you take your drop, you start going through your progressions. And at some point in time, you've got to have that alarm clock in your head that says, okay, it's time to check the ball down to the back. Okay, he's a great leader. You know, all you have to do is listen to his teammates and his coaches talk about him. I said the same thing about Jaden Daniels. And uh, we're not talking about guys that are boisterous and loud, that type of leader. We're talking about guys that do it by example, do it with their toughness, do it with their play, do it by being the first one in in the morning for film study, uh, the, the guy that's busting his ass in the weight room, you know, that type of leadership. And then on the field leadership in um, competing, being a baller, holding your teammates accountable, supporting your teammates in a positive way, all of those leadership skills that are so crucial for your starting quarterback to have. Okay, and then lastly, and uh, this is really, really important, you know, he's low maintenance. He is low maintenance. There is no DNB with him. DNB is drama, nonsense, and bullshit. And um, what Penix Jr. is not going to do in the NFL is he's not going to embarrass himself or the organization that drafts him. He's just going to do his job. He's going to represent, and he's going to play good football on Sundays, and that's huge for your quarterback. You know, he's a, he is really a solid character guy. You listen to him in interviews and the way he speaks and the things he says, uh, it says a lot about him, the young man, and what he's got going on in here and also what he's got going on upstairs. Okay, concerns on Penix Jr. Uh, this one kind of jumped out at me early in the season, and I watched probably about 75 to 80% of the games that uh, he played for Washington this year. And I think that I'm safe in saying that this was, this played out throughout the season, and that is, I think he lets poor throws affect him especially early in the game. What I mean by that is there were games this year where in the first quarter, if he misfired on a couple throws, it was like he couldn't pull himself out of it, like it was stuck in his mind and, and it caused him to press. And I always used to tell my quarterbacks, you know, you've got to have a really bad memory as a QB, because if you make a poor throw or you make a bad decision, you got to forget about it right now. Okay. You can't change what just happened, but you have a big, big effect on what is about to happen with what's going on upstairs. And I just think that there were games this year. And I, and I told my wife this a couple of times watching him in the first quarter of these games, I would say, you watch, he's going to, he's going to be inconsistent today. 
because he came out and made a couple of poor throws and he's not going to pull himself out of it. I think uh, also in the Michigan game, the national championship game, he got into that phase uh, where he was doing the same thing. He was missing throws and then he started pressing. And when he starts pressing, he starts overthrowing the ball, meaning throwing it too hard. And when he does that, he starts sailing the ball and throwing them high. And then the last concern, and, and I'm sure that this is the concern of every front office in the NFL, and that's his, the health of his knees, you know. Um, but he's, he went to the combine, and uh, they put him through some medical examinations, and the reports came out positive on his knees. So, you know, that's a testament to him and his rehab uh, skills. And, um, but that's, that's a concern. So he's had some knee injuries and knee problems in the past that he's had to deal with. You look for uh, Michael Penix Jr. to be the third or fourth quarterback picked in the draft. You know, uh, Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels are going to go one, two. And then uh, Drake May from North Carolina may be picked third or it may be Penix Jr. And then you've got J.J. McCarthy to throw in the mix there also. But I think Penix is going to go either third or fourth with the quarterback, uh, quarterbacks being picked. He, he's going to be a third or fourth QB pick, but he's going to be a damn good quarterback in the NFL, and he's going to make – a team very, very happy on draft day. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment down below if you feel like it. And look for my next My Take when I talk about North Carolina quarterback Drake May. This is QB Unfiltered. And remember, always throw the ball short to guys who can score. See ya.